Hey everybody, it's Angel from Halo Inspirations. We give you inspirations to help you spread beauty and joy through your quilting journey. Oh my gosh, happy day six to you guys. This is halfway through our 12 days of quilting. I hope you've been enjoying some of the motifs that we've been going through. And I hope this one doesn't disappoint you either. Uh, we are doing free motion quilting, so you will need your free motion quilting foot. But we're doing the simple meander, and I'll throw a picture up here. Now it looks kind of funny because I do some teaching. <laughs> Yours won't look like this, but it'll look similar, right? Because I am doing a little bit of teaching with it. Some things that you want to look for and be cognitive of. So that's why you got some funny places in there. So, but it is free motion quilting. And just like the first video, I did do a we, it wasn't just me, um, my, my partner in crime, uh, Miss Danielle, actually did a lot of work for this. So we did um, put together another doodling sheet. So there is places to practice first. And then the rest of the page is for you to fill out on your own. Doing that doodling really helps build that muscle memory and gives you that opportunity for your brain to start connecting to your hands and et cetera, et cetera. And really gets you focused. Uh, so I, I can't stress enough how much doodling is important. And I will bring you in first to do a small amount of doodling with you with this meander just like the first video. But what kind of things are you gonna need? Well, you'll need your practice sandwich, you'll need your machine, and you'll need your free motion foot. I also have my machine gloves. Of course, the needle I've been talking about this whole time, it's not changed that Crumb Pro by Schmetz Quilting 9014 needle. Um, I am still using, I don't use anything else besides Orofil Thread 50 weight, got to love it. I am gonna play with some 40 weight eventually, but. Right now I do everything with my 50 weight. So I do have that loaded. I did say the machine gloves, you're doodling, your mind ready, and a little fun, let's get together and have some fun. So having that fun attitude. And did I mention the sew slip? I, you, this isn't necessary, um, but I have found that it is extremely helpful. So all of those things that you can find in our shop if you're so interested. But, you know, let me stop talking on day six of free motion quilting, this wonderful meander. So let's bring you in, do some doodling, and get this show started. I'll see you guys in just a sec. Okay, just like the last time we did free motion quilting, I am bringing you in first because I always like to doodle prior to. What I think I'm going to draw gives me an opportunity to get focused in get ready to quilt, allows me to get a little bit of practice so that I get some muscle memory and help my brain and my hands communicate better. It's just like learning to write. So I am taking you in once again for my doodling. And a meander basically is just, um, it's doodling. But the important thing is, is that you are constantly changing directions. Okay, and you wanna to try to get equal spacing. When you're new, it doesn't always happen that way. Okay, you'll see you might get skinnier, you might get like the, the place between might get really skinny or they may get really far apart, but that's all a part of the, the process of learning how to meander. And it's not a difficult one. It will come much more quickly than you realize. The other thing is you want to try not to put in like any points or jaggeds. Uh, all of these are rounded um, per se. So you want to try not to get any real jiggy jaggy points. And you want to try not to cross over where you already went or get too close and touch. Okay. Those are it. Those are your guidelines. Now, if you get somewhere... I'm trying to think how to show you how to do this. If you get somewhere, and we'll, I'll show you on uh, when we're quilting, and you're, you get yourself in a corner, don't stress, okay? Just do what you gotta do to get out of there. Even if you have to cross over, just keep going. I promise you, it'll be okay. And, and you'll get better at this and better at this as we go along or as you keep practicing, it actually is a lot of fun. This one's a lot of fun. It's one of my favorites. Um, but 
the next thing is I'm going to take you to this to the sewing table and we're going to talk about meandering on your practice sandwich. See you in a sec. So here we are at the sewing station. Now in usually inside of a quilt you want to start in the middle. It's not the end of the world if you don't, but the idea behind starting in the middle is it allows you to work from the middle out. So the most you have if you're working on a domestic is inside, uh, it, well, the most inside of your throat space, which mine is only six and three quarters to seven inches. So the most that you'll have is half of the quilt and you can work yourself out, okay? But the other reason is it pushes some of that extra fabric away from the middle so you don't get as many puckers. So if I were going to start in the middle of a quilt somewhere, I'm still going to start in a block and I'm going to do it along the seam. Now this is a practice sandwich, so we can start anywhere we want. I'm just going to go ahead and start on the end because I think it's always good to um, practice bearing threads, but I do want to say at this point, you can actually do a little run through on how you're going to quilt this just pushing it through. Don't do that. <laughs> just getting an idea of where you're going to go, how you're going to do it. Just, just if you're on a little tiny practice sandwich, it's easy to do that if you would like. But we're first going to pull up the bobbin thread. So I do have my presser foot down. It's so important, guys. Put your presser foot down first. I'm holding on to my thread because it will shrink up real quick. I'm going to drop my needle. I'm going to lift my needle, okay? And while my presser foot is down, I'm going to go ahead and give it a little tug. Now, I don't know that you can see it, but I can. I can actually see my bobbin thread has been pulled up. Now, I can't reach it, so I'm going to lift my presser foot. Now, the tension has been released, so at this point, I'm going to hold that thread in place so that it doesn't disappear, okay? I got my bobbin thread up. I'm going to lower my presser foot again. Now, y'all know me. I can't eyeball to save my life. So I'm going to hand wheel down back in the same spot that I started. And I will tell you, I do have the needle down function, meaning when I stop quilting, it's going to stay down. But with a meander, I will encourage you to push the fabric in different directions opposed to spinning your fabric and here or your quilt and here is why I only have six and three quarters of seven inches right if I'm constantly turning my quilt that means I got to turn all of the quilt sometimes I may have a lot sometimes not so much but it's going to be a constant reposition of the fabric or of the quilt inside this little tiny throat space right so it's much easier and a lot less headaches if you learn to push your quilt around with your hands opposed to turning your quilt. Now, if you have to, sometimes there are circumstances when you feel like you have to, you do what you got to do to make it happen. But the thing about meandering is it can allow you to push the fabric along and it will help teach you how to navigate this motif by pushing fabric. This is a complete practice session. So if you've never done this, the first thing I want to say is if you've never done this or you're really new and you're on a practice sandwich, I don't want you to worry about your stitch lengths. <sighs> Saying that, I'm not going to worry about it right now, but I am going to try and get some consistency in the spacing, okay? And that, the, the timing of your hands and your machine should come with practice, but I'll, I'll explain here in just a bit. So let me get this started. I'm not even gonna focus on my stitch length. I'm just gonna sit here and quilt. Now, one other thing I wanna mention. This is your workspace in between your hands, okay? This is the part that you want to focus on. 
There's a couple of things. You don't want to walk. So walking looks like this. Hold on, let me get through this a little bit. Here's walking where I move my hands. And if you'll see, I got some jiggy jaggies. That's typically what happens. You want to allow the machine to stop. Mine usually takes an extra step, but you want to allow yourself to stop. The needle will stop before you reposition your hands, okay? First and foremost, so important, it's the best way to do it. Now, it is important to stop because eventually I might have my hands down here trying to push my fabric. I don't have any control over the fabric when it's up here. In here is where I have the best control, okay? So when you reposition, you're gonna wanna stop, lift your foot, allow the needle to completely stop, and then reposition your hands. You may get some jiggy jaggies when you're um, first practicing, or if it's been a while, like it's been a while for me. Um, you might get some when you start, but that'll go away in time also. Now, as far as timing goes, I'm gonna show you. I, I, I know I showed you with the um, loops, but I'm gonna show it again. If I go really slow, my stitches are really close together. And if I go really fast, well, I can't even go really fast. <laughs> the stitches get bigger. Okay, so we have bigger stitches here, smaller stitches here. It just, the happy medium is where you'd like to be. But when you're first learning this motif, just focus on getting some consistency. Now, one of, now I will tell you, it's kind of hard for me to talk and sew at the same time. So I'm gonna attempt this. <laughs> Hence why I'm not gonna focus too much on my stitch lengths, okay? But, when you are practice or when you are doing this motif, if you've got a um, charity quilt that you know you just want to get done and you don't have to do any um, custom quilting or you don't want to, uh, or maybe you just really love this motif, you want to you can not want to, I'm sorry, you can make this really big. Now I'm gonna show a picture at the end of some wider than this, I think, uh, motifs or meander, but you can get this done really quickly. And notice that I am just pushing fabric, guys. That's all I'm doing is pushing the fabric and I'm working inside my hand space. When I stopped, I let the needle completely stop before I lift my hands. Now I just moved the fabric a little, so I'm probably gonna get another jiggy jiggy. But you can do that for a charity quilt very easily. Another thing is if you're working in a really tiny block, you can make this really small. Let me reposition here really tiny so it's very adaptable to your needs okay all right so we're gonna keep going here for just a little bit all right I'm going to try and get back to normal here <laughs> I will say that this is a great place to start. You just want to try and not work yourself into a corner. Now I'm going to do one on purpose just so you can see it. If you happen to get yourself into a corner, I'm almost there. It's kind of hard for me to do because once you get really used to doing this motif, now, if you notice, what, well, let me just finish that sentence. Once you get really used to it, you will find yourself not working yourself into places uh, that you don't know where to go. 
It's always good to have an idea where you're going so you can prevent that. But this motif is actually one that the more you do it, the better you get. Well, they're all like that. But this one is, it's just a really great motif to practice and to do in different places. But you do get better, I promise. But if you get yourself stuck and you have nowhere to go, you just do whatever it is that you need to do to get out of it. Okay, and then just practice again. This is kind of odd being on the end here. Just get back to where you need to get back to. I just walked it and I, and start over, okay? It'll be all right, I promise you. Now the other thing too is you want to try and work in sections. I turned my fabric when I was showing you stuff and now this is how I'm quilting. Bottom line is you don't want to sit here and do this, right? I turned it to show you stuff and now I'm, I'm in a different angle, but I'm going to finish like this. <laughs> oh, how fun is that? But you want to try and work in sections. If you leave big spaces, they'll be more noticeable than your air. Okay, if you have jiggy jaggies or um, if you've got some sharp points. All of that will not be as noticeable at the end if you don't have as many big spaces. Those big spaces are a bummer. Now this is a tiny little practice sandwich. So, and that's just it guys. It's a practice sandwich. Allow yourself some fun. Now, you know that I do not believe in rules. There are no rules, right? But a good meander will not have sharp points and it will not have any crossovers. You just don't want to cross over to where you were. Now that was a little skinny, but that's okay. We're just going to keep on going. So sometimes, I'm going to try and do one on purpose here. You get yourself cut up and you might accidentally cross over. It's okay, guys. It's okay. Number one, this is a practice sandwich. But number two, even if it happened on your quilt, it'll be fine. It will be fine. But the idea is that you just keep on stitching, just making it go in various different directions. It's a really bad habit for me to not reposition enough. And I get it, you know, the idea is that you just wanna keep going, but trust me, it works out better if you do reposition and you don't walk like I just did again. Those are probably my two biggest um, bad habits. And then you want to watch the needle bar with your hands when you get close to the end here of your quilt, no matter what it is. Now, see, I just walked and you might not be able to see this, but I got a big stitch and that's just because I walked. And I backed myself in a little bit. I've got just a little bit left. I'm just going to end it right here. So that's meander. Just practice pushing that fabric, navigating yourself through your block, through your quilt, and just push the fabric and not spin it. It's, it really is a great motif to really teach you how to get through a quilt 
without doing a whole lot of spinning of the quilt, okay? So I am going to come back at you. I do have a picture of a larger scale. I think it's larger than this. It's kind of hard for me to tell by looking at this small piece, but um, I'm gonna come back, you, back at you and show you a picture of that. But practice your meander, guys. Uh, this is a great motif to use in a lot of different ways, whether you're doing you know, a tinier stippling is what we call the tiny meanders. We call that stippling. Or if you're using something much larger, you just want to make sure that you're covering sections and you're not leaving great big gaps. When you're practicing on a, on a practice sandwich or a practice quilt, don't worry too much yet about the stitch length. Eventually, you'll want to try and hone in to how fast your machine is going and your hands, they've got to come together and that'll come, I promise you, just keep practicing. But the meander, all by its lonesome. I'm trying to spin this so you could see different places of <laughs> and I'll come back at you in just a bit. Okay, I hope that was so helpful for you. Um, if, you've not, if you're new to free motion quilting, meander is a very big, uh, popular, uh, motif that a lot of people will utilize, especially when you know the quilt's going to be used and abused and you don't want to put a lot of custom into it. You can do it edge to edge. Now I did want to talk about there, when you're new to free motion quilting, one of the things that I remember is people would talk about different sizes. Um, so you do have the larger and the, and the medium, but then they talk about a small meander. It were, um, uh, they call it stippling. And <laughs> on that most fun, I'll circle and put a picture for that area right here. That's smaller, right? Um, and it is, one of the terms is stippling, and that's what they're saying when they use that term, if you've never heard it before, if you've heard it and not sure what it is. And those types of things, this, this motif doesn't have to be edge to edge. You can do it in one block. You can do it in one area. If you've got some negative space, negative space is that space without um, any real blocks or quilting involved. Uh, if you've got, you know, a, no color, it's just like maybe your background, but it's a certain area. You can do this in those places and feel that area and you can use it and you can use stippling in it. You can, you can do whatever you want. It's up to your creativity, but that I wanted to talk about that because I remember when I was first learning, I heard the word stippling and it, I wasn't sure. And then when I started to look for it, lo and behold, it was meandering, but just really tiny because <laughs> you can go really tiny <laughs> in your stippling. <laughs> so that's what that is. And you have, this motif is so wide open to use in so many ways. It's wherever your heart is content. Now, as far as that doodling sheet, I did not mention at the beginning of this video, it is, the link for it is in the description box down below. I will also put, I uh, hope, an address down here at the, somewhere near the bottom. Um, that it's in basically the inspirations area on my website. So the first two have been dropped. So we have the loops yesterday, or not yesterday. That was a long time ago. I guess it was day two. I don't remember. <laughs> I think it was day two. And then this one, which is the meander. So I've got two, I've got one left to drop and I'll drop it when the next uh, free motion video comes out. But it is, found on our website under inspirations. There's a lot of stuff there if you're interested. Uh, for these particular doodle sheets, you can just click on it and download it onto your computer. You don't have to sign up for a newsletter, although I do encourage you to do so because I do drop codes um, and discounts and different things for those who are in Be Inspired. I also tend to do that uh, in our Creative Kingdom Facebook private group. Both of those, um, tend to get some little um, special discounts in our shop periodically from time to time. And so I do encourage it, but it's not required for the doodling sheet. Um, Danielle did a wonderful job. So if you are interested, it's there for you. And I just wanted to give you a heads up on, on where to find it because I didn't mention that at the beginning. But that is 
that is free motion quilting a meander guys and um if you have any questions do not hesitate to drop them down below in the comments come out to facebook today at 3 p.m eastern daylight time every time a video drops 99.9% .9 of the time I'm doing a Facebook live to back it up with some quilting and answers. So we call it live Q and A, live quilting and answer session. So I will be there today. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, suggestions, I would love to have you on board, but uh, that is, that is free motion quilting with a meander. So I will see you again tomorrow at 11 AM for day seven. What are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow we're doing another ruler. So it's a different ruler. Last time we did a straight, this one has got some shapes. And so I'm going to give you a couple of ideas on what you can do with it and have a little fun doing that. I hope you enjoy that also, but I'll see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. here on YouTube. And every day I drop that video, I'll be 3 p.m. on Facebook. So until next time, guys, yeah, you know, may you all continue to be inspired productive, ever so joyful, never stop believing and never stop making your dreams in quilting come true. I love y'all. See y'all soon. Happy quilting. Mm -hmm.